What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Don't Get Nailed podcast. The podcast that teaches you how not to get nailed by life. Or in other words, don't get screwed by life. I'm your host, Chris Mo. I'm a high-ticket salesman here in the Los Angeles area. I've done over $5 million in construction sales. I own over 30 ATMs and do a bunch of other cool business stuff. If you don't know, I'm on the pursuit towards financial abundance, time, freedom, and joy. AKA, I want to make a lot of money with y'all. I want to do whatever I want, whenever I want, while being joyful. In today's episode, we're going to carry on our conversation from the last podcast. For those of you who don't know, last week or a month ago it feels like last week but if for you guys that are watching maybe it's last week i went to this event in utah south lake utah called the limitless arena where they had a bunch of these great speakers talking about how they were successful and these are the speakers of the top one percent in the business world today and i got to learn from a handful of them and for those of you who couldn't afford to go or just didn't have the time to go i actually took notes so you guys can learn from from me. Again, I make this podcast so you guys can get all this information and be successful for yourself. I'm already going to be successful. I know my path towards financial abundance, time, freedom, and joy. I'm on that route, but I want to get as many people on this journey with me because I believe everyone should live their best life if they want to, as long as they want to go ahead and try. So for today's podcast, if you guys didn't listen to the last episode, I already talked about a couple of the speakers. If you haven't watched it yet, go ahead and watch it. I actually go over in that podcast the reason why i named this podcast the don't get nailed podcast the value that this podcast is going to bring to you and we're going to go over the last remaining speakers of the event so this podcast is going to be a little bit longer i'm going to be trying to just get down to the nitty-gritty and give you guys all these golden hammers by the way guys i did get a golden hammer Now, I don't know what I'm going to be using this thing for yet, but it looks pretty cool. I like it. It's a whole idea between how life has a bunch of these clues that they give you, and I want to call these clues golden hammers. So every single time I learn a valuable information, I'll go ahead and give you guys golden hammers so you guys don't think that everything is a nail, and you guys take advantage of life because life is freaking amazing, and you can do whatever it is that you want in this life as long as you act on your dreams. So for today's speakers, just so you guys know who we're going to be talking about we have a couple of speakers that you guys may or may not know the first one is going to be david goggins we have gary v ed milet eric thompson cody sanchez pace morby bradley and andy frisella so guys this is going to be a jam-packed episode please make sure you stay to the end because maybe 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 there's just one piece of information that you need to completely 360 your life you don't need to know everything sometimes all you need to know is just that one good little bit of information to get you to the next level guys that's all life is really about just getting more golden nuggets getting more golden hammers applying them to your life and living the life that you want to live so without further ado let's get started with the first speaker david goggins some of you guys may know him some of you guys may not know him majority of the people who know him know him as this guy who used to be an ex-military guy he used to be fat as fuck and then he completely changed his life by getting into the best shape of his life and now he motivates people he's a motivational speaker and he is a realist i like to say because he's really real on people some people are too sensitive where the information that he puts online kind of makes people freak out on how to be in life because no one really tells them the truth so there are about one two three four five key things that i got from david goggins so the first one is someone out there wants your life that's the one key principle i got the first one someone out there wants your life so i tell this to a lot of people right here in this world it's a competition whether you like it or not we are all competing we are all competing majority of the time for the same exact same life i remember this hit my heart and my soul and my mind because there was once upon a time when i was in high school and there was a time where i was taking this ap calculus class and back in high school i used to be this kid where i used to I would say get smart and I would get by. I would be faded all the time. So I was always smoking. I was always being a clown in class. People always thought of me of like, I would say like a jokester. So sometimes I wouldn't really be taken seriously, but somehow, some way, I understood things fairly, fairly easily. So school just came really, really easy to me. So math was one of the things that I was really good at. So 
during my last year in college, I decided to take AP Calculus. And during that time, it was my time where I was selling drugs, mostly weed, and I would always show up late to class. I would always show up faded. I would always show up tired. I would sleep in class. I was basically the kid that was probably going to fail AP Calculus. And I know some of you guys may be saying, but that's AP Calculus, dude. How did you even get into that class? Well, like I said, things come to me fairly, fairly easily. But around this time, this is the time that I started to learn how to teach myself. And then I will tell you this story later because there's a whole nother thing that I want to talk to you about that. But right before we took our AP calculus test, our teacher told us a story about this kid, about this kid who was in China, who is on the other side of the world, who is almost a day ahead of you and is wanting the same exact same life that you want. So that always got stuck to me where I'm always thinking there is someone out there that wants my life. There is someone out there that wants the car that I drive that wants the house that I want, that wants the body that I want, that wants the right relationships that I want, that wants the money that I want, wants everything that I want. And I have to outwork that guy. You guys have to outwork me. And I am up at 5.30 in the morning almost every single day doing what I have to do to get to the next level. This is a competition. So don't think that this world is going to be fair and just give you everything because you are who you are. Like, no way. You are competing out there to get the life that you want. And there's someone out there who is competing just as hard as you. So you have to remember every single day, there is someone out there that is competing against you who wants what you want. And that in by itself should light a fire inside you that would want to make you compete out there because this is a dog eat dog world. And if you don't compete and if you don't put your best foot forward, you are going to lose and someone else would and will get the life that you want. So that was key point number one. The other point is the right friends. So right friends give no fucks. I don't know what the give no fucks stand for. Again, this was about a month ago, but the right friends. I tell this to a lot of people. You probably aren't in the position that you want to be at because you're hanging out with the wrong people. You're hanging out with losers, I like to call them. People who are doing the same thing, partying all the time, not reading books, not learning about wanting to be better, not talking about money, not building relationships with other people, just staying in the same place, playing this game of life very, very safe. If you continue to be with these friends, you will not level up. There is going to be a time and place where you have to say goodbye to your friends and get new friends. You have to just tell them, hey, you know what? I'm on this path right now where I'm on the pursuit of financial abundance, time, freedom, and joy because I want my life to be great. And soon enough, maybe there's going to be a time where you isolate yourself completely with no one around you and you just have time to work on yourself. And while you work on yourself and you become better and you become a better version of you when you start going to these networking events like the one in utah the one i just went to you will find that it's very very easy to connect with other people because they will see it they will see it in the way you talk the way you move the way you walk the way you just handle things they are going to see that you got it that you understood the truth about hard work and they will gladly start to network with you and you will build your better relationships and you will level up to a capacity that you can't even understand. Now, sometimes a lot of people struggle with getting friends. I get it. I don't want to just be here telling you like all the fancy things like no, like I want to give you guys golden information on what you can apply now to your life. Like how do you get friends? Dude, you can get friends by joining Facebook groups, by cleaning up your social media, showing people what you're attracted to, messaging people, Dude, people don't realize that we live in a world where social media rules our life, but yet we don't use it to our advantage. There are people out there who are literally on the same journey that you want to be on, and it literally just takes one DM to message them and be like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing, but how can I be better? And a lot of this information is already free online, and you should go ahead and go on YouTube, go wherever you get your free source of education, apply it to your life, become better, and I will guarantee you networking with those people in real life be the next step which will be very very easy to do so you can always reach out to me i'm more than happy to make new friends i don't care whether you're at level zero because I was once there and I would help you even get to this level where I'm currently at. And together we can go ahead and get to the next level. So get better friends, guys. The next clue, the next golden hammer was start collecting wins the moment you wake up. So a lot of people dread waking up. And I'll be completely honest with you guys. I personally 
don't always feel 100% where I want to wake up at 5.30 in the morning in the middle of the darkness and it's cold as hell and I'd rather be comfortable in bed. I'm just like everyone else. I'm a regular dude, just like everyone else. I hate doing what's right for me just as much as everyone else, but I know I have to get things done. But I have been able to make that transition so much easier on myself by starting with the little wins. What do I mean? I know a lot of people who don't wake up and they just get out of bed and they don't do their bed. Little things like that, just doing your bed, brushing your teeth, doing your hair, taking a shower, getting your whole natural hygiene up in order, going to the gym, all these little wins in the morning eventually stack up and it starts to make a winning mindset in your brain. If you start to develop this winning mindset, you will start to realize that life is a lot easier to win and you can accomplish anything and anything that you want. So how do you start? Dude, literally what I just said, wake up in the morning, do your bed, brush your teeth, go to the shower, go to the gym. All these little wins is all you need to start developing a winning mindset. The next golden hammer is build your strengths based on what you need. The other day, someone asked me like, how many books do I read? I read about like, say two to three books a month, which is about 30 books in a year. But I told him, I don't read books like most people where I'll just read whatever it is that I like be given to me. Like, no, I read books now. I don't really read self-improvement nowadays. I read books based on what what I need. Like right now, I'm trying to hire an assistant next. That's one of the key things that I'm going to hire in the business is an assistant because I need to buy back my time. So I've never hired anyone. I mean, I've hired freelancers here and there, but in order for me to start hiring and managing people, it's my first time. I still don't know how to do a lot of things. I think I know what I'm doing, but I would rather learn on someone else's experience where they already hired an assistant. They already told them what to do, and it makes my life much easier. And right now, I'll give you guys this golden there's a book called buy back your time by dan mitchell i think that's his name it's a blue book if you guys want another book let me know but this book is made by this guy who grew this tech company and he was struggling just like everyone else and he eventually developed systems and processes and learned how to buy back his time and he teaches you how to hire an assistant how to give them the notes and what they should do and what they shouldn't do and how to make your life so much easier so little things like that learn things based on what you need maybe you need sales maybe you know marketing maybe you just need to develop coding or whatever it is that you need develop a high income skill develop and learn things based on what you need sometimes some people work on things that they don't need and the biggest and best example that i give people is people with like six packs right a lot of these people end up working out working out working out and they are in the best shape of their life but i noticed that their biggest thing that's hurting in their full development of living a better life is money like majority of people who work out and have these really nice bodies suck at making money like stop Stop learning about working out and being in the best shape of your life and learn how to make more money. You have to learn things that you're lacking on. So learn other skills, learn other things that can make you a better unit as a whole. Snatching souls. <laughs> The last one was snatching souls. This one was really, really funny. I think it goes back to the fact of competition. So this guy, David Goggins, he wakes up at like three in the morning, four in the morning. I don't know what the hell he does. I don't know how he does it. I'm never going to do that. I don't care. Like I'm good at 530. The most 6 a.m. is better. But his analogy behind it is that he's competing almost 24 seven. So this guy wakes up at like two, three in the morning and he goes on like a 25 mile run every single day. And people say that it's bullshit, but I don't know. That guy seems a little crazy. But while he runs, he was telling us this analogy that runs through his head that every single time he's going past the door, right? Every single time he sees a house with the lights off, all he's doing and thinking is I'm taking that person's soul because he's out there winning. He's out there getting his W. He's out there getting shit done. And a lot of times I like to think the same exact same way when I'm up at 530 in the morning and there's very too little cars on the freeway. There's very too little little people at the gym in the morning. There's very too little people getting shit done because that's really the reality of things. Not a lot of people are competing at a really high level. When you get to a higher and higher level, there is less competition. In the bottom where everyone is at, it's so crowded. People are out there fighting for the same exact same thing. But as you notice, as you level up, it gets less crowded. But you start to realize there's not a lot of people out there that are really grinding it out. And I just thought it was really funny how this guy thinks about snatching people's souls while he's running at three in the morning. Like that guy's crazy. That's a whole nother level of like commitment. So that's what I learned from 
David Goggins. Honestly, I've read a lot about David Goggins. I don't think I've ever read any of his books. Like he has a book called Can't Hurt Me because I just, at that point, I stopped reading self-improvement. If you are at level zero, I highly, highly encourage you to start reading self-improvement. Start reading it. I can't think of books on the top of my head of what I would recommend in regards of self-improvement. It's been a long time since I've read self-improvement. I am always self-improving myself, but I learn it through like podcasts nowadays. Every now and then I watch like a podcast I'm based on self-improvement. Nowadays, I'm just learning business, marketing, and sales. That's all my life really accounts for. But if you are at level zero, please start off at self-improvement. David Goggins is a really great person to learn from. He may be a little too harsh for a lot of people because he's just really, really real. I don't mind it because I'm really, really real. And that just means because I love brutal honesty that I can handle. Some people can't. So maybe you should read some self-improvement that isn't as real as David Goggins. And that's okay. Everyone's different. You all need to find your coach and what works for you. The next speaker is Gary. Gary V. Now, I don't know if you guys know or may not know Gary V. He's like really, really well known in the social media space. Honestly, he's one of the very reasons I even wanted to go to this event because he has been a great impact in my life altogether from the very beginning of Level Zero, where he did, I would read a lot of his self-improvement videos. I mean, I would see a lot of his self-improvement videos, read a lot of his books, learn marketing a lot from him. Very, very, very smart guy. He was known as one of the very few people who started out building a personal brand and he grew it and he's always giving back to the community. But just like Gary Vee, like this guy's really real and he likes to talk about the overall picture and not just one little thing, which his whole concept is, dude, live your best freaking life and be freaking happy. So there's a couple of points that I want to point out that he said, which is the first one is be happy. Dude, like there are times where you're so much in the grind and you don't realize that you have an abundance of things. And this happens to me every single like day. Sometimes I forget to acknowledge how far that I've gotten. Because if I really wanted to look at the grand schemes of things and the global aspect of things, right, I am technically in the top 1% of the world. When you start comparing every single country, right, not a lot of people in the whole entire world make over six figures. Not a lot of people in the whole entire world make, what, $3,000 passively. Not a lot of people get to live in LA. Not a lot of people have a food shelter and all these little necessities to just be a human. So sometimes you have to just take a step back and, and acknowledge everything that you do have. And sometimes we take those things for granted. But when you take a step back and you look at everything that you do have, dude, you should be happy because it can always be a lot worse. So that's the very first thing. The next thing is the most sustainable way for you to do it. So, and finding fuel. If you're building a personal brand like I am, I've been working on this thing for, I would say like a year now. And I haven't gone on all in, I would say because I have too many things going on. And as I've told you guys, this here, these videos that I make, these aren't really much for you guys as they are for me. This is just me documenting my life and talking about myself. So when I get to be 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, I get to look back at my 20 year old self and kind of remember everything that I went through because my brain itself is not going to be able to store all these memories that I live out in life. So I'd rather just put it on camera for myself to create this really great movie one day. But I need to to find a way to still be able to do it and not make it seem like it's a chore where I hate to do it. So lately, I've been thinking I got to make two podcasts a month. I make short clips. But the best way to do all of this is to pay people for my time. Like, I don't have the time to edit as much as people think that I do have the time. I used to edit, but it just takes too much time. I'd rather invest my money into other money-making activities, like making more sales, creating more partnerships, things like that. So I got me an editor. Posting at least two times a month is my commitment to myself. And all these little things that I have to do where if I said I'm going to do it this day, then I'm going to go ahead and do it this day. These little things to make it seem like it's not a job where I hate to do basically creating content and just talking about my life. So you have to find a way to make it sustainable for yourself. Whatever you can go ahead and sustain, just create systems and processes. And we'll talk about that in another day. But you have to also find fuel. What fuels you to do all of this, right? I tell people I don't have to make these videos. I don't. I don't have to make these long form videos. I don't have to make short form videos. If anything, I am burning through money right now just trying to push content to a lot of people. But why? Why do I want to do it? Because this is what I want. I don't care how much it's going to cost me. I really do not because if it does work and if it like breaks the internet somehow, some way, it's going to be goddamn worth it and I'm going to be happy that I did invest it because this is what I want. I don't really want a fancy car or a fancy place or fancy clothes and all these little things. I'd rather do this because this is fun. This is I like walking around in the city and just maybe being no 
known. I don't want to be like really well known to the whole world. That's why I focused on just the business side of things. But this is cool. This is what I find cool. And if it can somehow help me manage and go ahead and make me live and travel and make money at the same time, do kudos. But either way, I'm not going to let this kind of dictate my way of making money because I'll make money elsewhere. That's why I don't charge anything for anyone. It, it is what it is. But that is fuel enough because, dude, for those of you that don't know, I grew up really, really poor. And that fuels a lot of what I do where I don't want to be poor. I don't want to go back to how I was raised. I don't want my kids to go through any of that stuff. So I would rather put in the work right now so I can live a way better life 10 years from now. So you got to find your fuel. And a way to find your fuel, and for some of you, this might be your fuel. A little of this fuels me, which is sticking it to your friends, right? I don't know. I have an ego, as everyone should have an ego to some degree, right? But sometimes that ego and that fuel can be sticking it to your friends. Not maybe telling them, I told you so in front of their face, but by showing how great your life is on camera and showing how great your life is going to be and the fact that you're chasing your dreams, you're just sticking it to everyone that didn't believe in you, that is not chasing their own dreams. And a lot of times these haters, I like to call them, they're just hating because they don't get to do it. So do it just to stick it to the haters, bro. But building a personal brand is very, very important. He talks a lot about that in the whole entire show. I talk about that all the time, building your own personal brand. But while you're building your own personal brand, another key thing is that people are going to leave bad comments on your videos, dude. I have tough skin. I really don't care what people say about me. I really don't care what the comments say. In fact, I actually enjoy it. When people leave bad comments on these YouTube videos, that's majority of the time where I get haters on. I clap back, dude. I wish you would say that thing again. And I would just keep on feeling because it's just entertaining. Because honestly, dude, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad that you have nothing else better to do but to leave a bad comment on someone else's video. I get it if it's a thing that's like debatable, if you're trying to debate with somebody based on something that you may not agree on. But just to call somebody a name or just to say something stupid, like why? Why do you have to do that? Like, is your life so sad? So that's why for me, when I look at these comments, I'm like, bro, I feel bad for you. Like you have a horrible life for the fact that you have just a couple of minutes to go ahead and leave a bad comment. Like, dude, that's pretty goddamn sad. So when you do have haters, another golden hammer is that you're in the field and they're not. So when you're building a personal brand, when you're making all these videos, a lot of people feel really insecure in the fact that what other people will say about them. Dude, don't listen to them. Don't listen to the comments. Don't listen to the haters because you're the one playing the game. You're the one making the content. You're the one putting yourself out there. They're not. 99% of people don't want to put their face on camera because they're scared to be judged. They're scared to see what other people would say about themselves and dude why are you gonna take advice from people who are not even playing the game like i don't another one is going to be finding your relationship with money i remember this one so in the event there was a whole group of people who do the same thing that i do which is high ticket sales in the construction game and those people sell solar and if you guys don't know you can make a lot of money selling solar right now right now there's a solar boom going on where you can make 10 15 20 thousand dollars a month just selling solar i always tell people if you don't know what to sell sell solar because that is booming right now it's an easy sell do what you got to do either way in this event there was a group of people who were making 10 15 20 grand a month in commissions just selling solar but for kids my age who get money really really fast where you're making 10 15 20 grand a month it can get really scary because this amount of money is not normal for a 20 year old to have so sometimes they build a bad relationship with money and they start building an ego that's too big for themselves and they just don't know how to act and it can get really really scary because they think that they figured it out they don't want any advice from anyone else and honestly this probably would have been me if i didn't have a mentor who kind of just put my feet back on the ground when i was making 10 15 20 grand in a month he was teaching me the importance of money and how it can corrupt people's mind and it can make people do shady shit because in the last two years i've been screwed by two contractors that owe me over twenty thousand dollars and it's because of greed and in relationship and business really business itself people can get really really greedy when it comes to money and that's why when it comes to like building relationships with people or even teaching people about money i get really like standoffish because i know that fast money can make people act a certain way and when you're 20 years old you may be blowing it on cars and like clothes and all these little things and soon enough you do this because you think that you're gonna make another ten thousand dollars the next month you're gonna make another twenty thousand dollars next month and you never invest it you never save so for those 20 year olds 
parents who are just like me, right? Learn to save your money. In the beginning, from 20 to say 30 years old, just save your money. Because in my first year of making six figures, dude, I blew all my money. I wouldn't say all my money, but I blew majority of my money. I remember the first year I did my taxes, I spent over $30,000 on just eating out. I was like, what the hell? Like, this is somebody's yearly salary, and I just spend it on just fast food and restaurants. And don't get me wrong, like, that's literally where I spend majority of my money is just food. But, like, $30,000, I was like, whoa, like, Chris, like, you need to stop. That's why the second year I invested into the ATM business to start investing into passive income. And since then, this year alone, I've saved so much more money and reinvested it back into the business. And this is going to be my strategy for the next five years where everything that I make, I reinvest it. Everything that I make, I reinvest it. Because now I am getting to the point where, like, I'm enjoying the fruits of my labor where the ATMs are paid off. And if I continue to reinvest back into the business, back into the business, dude, I don't work because I have to work. I work because I like to work. And that's where everyone needs to be at, where you are on the pursuit of financial abundance, time, freedom, and joy. And I guarantee you, your life will be so much better because speaking to me now, I am in a lot better place than where I was three years ago, just only making six figures. Now I'm making six figures with passive income. It reduces my level of stress so much. I have so much time on my hand and life is so much better and it's only going to get better. So save your money, reinvest it into other things, reinvest it back into businesses, back into yourself and don't spend all your money, dude. The last key component that I'll leave you guys is hunt the day. One day of being unproductive. So there's going to be a time and place where you're going to go through the cycles of the grind, right? You're just working, 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 working. You're waking up at 530 in the morning. You're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing and then you're going to hit a roadblock. This happens to me all the time, guys. I am not perfect. I'm not a robot. I can't go ahead and perform at 120% all the time. I just can't. Like, I'm human. You are all human. There's no way someone performs at 100, 120% every single time. Even the best athletes in the world still mess up. So don't be too hard on yourself for being unproductive one day. Like, there are days where, dude, I just say, fuck it, and I don't want to do anything because I'm burned out with everything I do. But that one day, I don't let it be two days, three days, four days, or a whole week. Like, I get back on it. I go back to my systems. I go back to my routines, and I go back on it. But don't be too hard on yourself for not being 120% every single time. The point of the game is to continue to keep going. So if you feel like you've been working a lot, don't be too hard on yourself for taking a day off. But don't make it two, three, four days, five days, or a month like a lot of people do. Just be okay with, dude, it's slow progress. You'll be fine. You're going to get there. And it, one day you will get there. So punt the day, dude. So that was Gary V. And these are the best key things that I got from everything that he talked about, right? I don't want to bore you guys with the whole entire speech. Like a lot of this is just cliff notes, guys. You guys can just get the cliff notes. This is all you really need. Again, maybe it's just that one little bit of one information that for one of you guys, this is all you guys need to completely get to the next level. So the next speaker was Ed Milet. Now, honestly, I have known Ed Milet for a while now, but I've never really consumed his content. I know he's a motivational speaker and he writes books and he has his own podcast, but the way he got really, really, really wealthy is by owning a bunch of businesses. So he owns a lot of businesses. I can't say too much about him because I really don't follow the guy as much as I should. Great guy, buff ass dude. And this is very the first time that I kind of heard him in person. And dude, the story that he told about his son gave me goosebumps. I personally, hands down, think that he was the best speaker out of everyone in the event. That was crazy. But I've known Ev Milet because of like Andy Frisella, which is our last speaker. But there's a couple key things that I want to go ahead and share with you because he had a story about his son, of how his son was a completely level zero and then just changing his mindset made him turn into a competitive person who is now on trying to be, I think, like, all-star golf teams or any, any, I don't know what else, but he completely changed his mind. But um, there's some key components. That there's, like, the first one, which is vision is far away, one away, and it's a lonely road. Let's combine both of those, actually. Dude, I like to use myself as an example, so let's say this, right? Creating content, making it on YouTube, it's a long way. Like, right now, I'm barely going to be hitting 600 subscribers. I have to hit 1,000, then I have to continue to hit more. I'm a long way from making this thing take off. Maybe not a long way from making money, but making this thing take off from what I want, it's gonna be a while. 
And I am putting that into my head where I'm going to get there one day. Okay, it's going to take a while. But as long as I'm doing and enjoying my ride there, it's going to be fine. But one key thing that I have to remember is that, dude, it's going to be a lonely road. It's going to be a lonely road. And throughout your whole journey of being successful, wanting to be better, it's going to be lonely. It's going to be lonely. And that's why I said you have to find friends who are on the same path, the same journey, because it makes it a lot easier. There was a point in my life where I was the only one of my friends making success figures and it felt boring it felt lonely and that's why i tell people it's a lot more fun making money with other people having friends that have money is so much better when you get to go out you get to travel you get to spend whatever you want without feeling somebody like feeling like if somebody there just you shouldn't do something i like to live my life based on what i want how i want to do things and i don't want to limit myself because someone else can't so in the beginning it's going to be lonely so you have to be okay with that you have to be okay with being the only person in your group of wanting to be successful, wanting to want a life that most people will never have. So just be comfortable with that for a little bit, at least for a little bit. I promise you it gets easier because when you're doing all of these great things, another component is when you're doing something great, it won't feel right. Guys, making these videos, the podcast, editing, emailing, everything that I do every single day, sometimes it just doesn't feel like I'm doing anything. Like it doesn't feel like it's moving the needle all the time. I completely see it move the needle a year later when things are finally in their place. But at the moment, like right now when I'm making this content and I'm only having 600 subscribers, it doesn't feel right where I can just be watching TV. I can be out with friends. I can do a bunch of these things that are non money making activities or not getting me closer to my goal because those make me feel better. Those make me feel complete at the moment because this right here just feels like work and it doesn't make me complete because it just feels weird and just feels like when am I going to get there? Is it even going to work? All these little doubts that you have in your mind, dude, that's just how it feels. Like I tell people, I never knew what I was doing when I bought the ATM company with four ATMs. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know whether it was going to work or not. Honestly, when I bought my ATM company, I was at the point where like, Dude, fuck it. If I lost $30,000 going into that deal, then so be it. I really do not care. Like, I'm going to learn my lesson, and at least I'm putting myself out there. At least I'm working on trying to be better and trying to build a business. And honestly, if it wasn't for me taking that jump of faith, I wouldn't be at 30 ATMs now. And honestly, I'm just figuring out as I go. I don't I don't know whether I'm always right. I know when I make my, like, decision-making analysis, I not dumb to like make wrong decisions, but I always try to make the right decision. I'm not 100% right all the time, but I never know or no one ever knows what they're doing 100% of the time. We're all kind of just guessing our way over there, dude. So be okay with not knowing how you're going to get there. So the next key component that he talks about is that great people compete, hyper competitive momentum. Going back to the very first thing with like David Goggins, right? Dude, you got to be competitive, bro. You got to be competitive in this environment, in this business world, because if you're not, there's going to be people like me who are going to run all over you. I love to compete. Everything is a competition with me. Everything is a competition with me. I'm just wired that way. I don't know what it is. It's a freakish thing. I think it's like probably like something about me just wanting to feel whole or just wanting to make myself feel better. That's probably why I compete. Either way, it's a good attribute to have. I wouldn't want to like give it away to anyone because this is what drives me is just competition. I love competing. Like if you want to play video games, right? I love competing on FIFA and I love playing Call of Duty because I'm trying to beat the other person. So you have to be very, very hyper competitive. And the how you, you get up in levels, there's people who are more competitive than you. I'm very competitive, but there's people who are way more competitive than I am. There are people who wake up earlier than me. There are people who work more than me, and they're just wired differently, dude. I'm wired differently compared to a lot of other people, but there's people who are wired even crazier than me, and it's a matter of how far up do you want to go. The higher up you want to go, the more competitive you're going to have to get. And I don't know how high up I want to go, but I know I'm going to get up there. So that means I have to have some level of competition. So you have to have some level of competition in you and you have to develop a competitive drive or you will lose. There's people out there that want what you want and you have to be able to compete. So you have to be in the best shape. You have to read a lot more, gain a lot more skills, be the best version of yourself because there's people out there that want your life. So get 
ready to compete. Stop being lazy. Stop being scared to like make other people losers, dude. I know I'm not. I for sure will beat you. And the last thing that I'm going to leave you guys with everything that Ed Milet said, and this is probably the biggest key component. He calls it the one, right? And I've always thought about this. I've just never been able to put it all together. And I've actually read this book of Ed Milet. It's called The One. So he has this belief where everyone in their family has that one person, that one person that's going to change their whole entire generation's life, whether it's money, whether it's their whole happiness factors, whether it's anything that they are struggling with. There is someone in their family that is going to be the one, the one to change it all. And that's either going to be you or that's going to be someone else later down in your lineage. Personally, for me, I think that I'm the one in my family. And you can always kind of tell who's the one in your family. Now, does it mean that they're the only one? I don't think so. I think there can be multiple ones, but usually there's only one, right? And you can tell based on how that person is moving. Like my family, they know how much I'm working. They know what drives me. They know what my life consists of. But that's because of the way I show up, right? I say what I'm going to do. I do what I say that I'm going to do. And I show up. You have to start thinking, are you the one in your family? to change their lives it can be you it's literally up to you to be the one in your family to change the entire atmosphere of your whole entire generation's life it just takes one person to change multiple people's lives and that can be you it doesn't have to be anyone else and the best way that i like to give this analogy is based on like that one friend that everyone's kind of waiting right going back to like okay i don't want to hang out with loser friends but i don't want to leave my friends behind how do we fix that then you start wanting your friends to do better and how do you do that you lead by example i'm in the point in my life where i like to lead by example meaning i'm gonna go ahead and do shit and lead by example so i'm gonna get up in the morning i'm gonna go to the gym i'm gonna make money i'm gonna do everything that i say that i'm gonna do and as i do what i do and people see what i do people will start slowly getting attracted to that and if you're my friend you'll ask me what i'm doing now be more than happy to help you because i want you to succeed and that's how you develop your friends with you at the same time and unfortunately not it's not gonna work 100% of the time because some friends just rather want to be losers and be lazy and not want to do what is best for them and that's okay like let them be losers let them be whatever it is that they want to be but slowly you'll attract more people who want to be great who want to be better and that's going to be your new tribe slowly you develop a group of ones around you and you guys can all be great together so be the one in your family to change your whole generation's life and don't think that it's going to be your cousin or your friends or anyone else like it can be you you just got to trust yourself so that was Ed Milet. If you guys don't know him, I would suggest follow his podcast. He's really, really great. He's for sure someone I would love to be one day. The next one is going to be Eric Thomas. Now, Eric Thomas, he was a motivational speaker. He had like a lot of things on his things, but honestly, there was only one key thing because again, I don't really follow self-improvement nowadays. Eric Thomas, great guy. Honestly, it's one of the things that I listen to very, very often is his little story about like waking up and you have to want what you want as much as you want to breathe. That little story. I'm butchering it maybe i'll tell you guys another day but the one key golden hammer that i got from eric thomas that day is the fourth quarter where dude it's the last month already of the year this is the time where you start to prepare for the next year so i'm on the path right now where i'm getting ready for the next year people need to start acting like every single day is the fourth quarter every single time is the fourth quarter and start putting the gas to the fucking engine bro like start working harder start acting like this is it like you're not gonna get an another chance you're not gonna get a second opportunity to get what you want like you have to go ahead and start acting like it's the fourth quarter every single day and start working on achieving what you want that's practically all i got from him a lot of other stuff was like motivational stuff but fourth quarter mindset guys start like working towards that dude cody sanchez dude cody sanchez has blown up in the last couple of like years i wouldn't say last year she's blowing up and she's the lady who's talking about buying laundry mats talking about buying small businesses honestly before cody sanchez blew up i've been looking into buying small businesses for a really really long time and there was no one really out there in the space really doing it besides her like a lot of the things before i bought the atm company i was like thinking already to myself and she somehow just showed up in my story i'm like bro i've been telling people for days this is like the key thing forget real estate forget stocks forget everything else 
It's business. You have to get into business, and that is what makes cash flow, which is what everyone wants. Nobody wants passive income. Everyone wants cash flow. Everyone wants money today where they can buy stuff today, and buying businesses is the best way to do it. So there's a couple of key things that she went ahead and talked about. So let's start with the first one. Motivation does not equal money. So you guys can believe me or not believe me. It's totally up to you guys. You guys will get there on your own. And honestly, I didn't believe it when someone told me this. But once you get to six figures, bro, you're going to realize that it does not make you happy. Everyone's chasing the whole, I'll make $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month, and I'll be happy. Or I'll get to a certain number and I'll be happy. I've heard it from many multiple people making many multiple six, seven figures, and they get there and they're not happy. There's a lot of people who sell their businesses for millions and millions and hundreds of millions, and they lose purpose. They lose drive. They go into depression because they realize that money is not happiness. And luckily for myself, going down this whole route of like self-improvement money business, I'm learning that at a really early age where I'm getting to work on what I'm really passionate about, which is helping other people, helping other people do cool shit and doing cool shit with cool people while living an abundant life. That's what I want. That's what I think is way better than money. Like I get more happy helping my friend make $10,000 than me making ten thousand dollars that's like crazy but you're not gonna know this because you haven't made your first ten thousand dollars but when you make your first ten thousand dollars you're gonna realize that it's just another number now when i make three five ten thousand dollars honestly it doesn't feel the same it doesn't give me the same joy that it once made me like and that's why i try to not give money kind of an emotion anymore where it's just money dude it helps me pay the bills it helps me live my life i don't try to live too much of a really luxurious life i'm a really minimalist the guy where all I need is what I need and that's it a lot of the shit goes back into the business back into me living a more comfortable life a more peaceful life that's where my money really goes to that's why you don't see me with a fancy car fancy clothes or anything like that I do dress well because I learned how to dress well at a budget beside that like I'm not spending all the money that I have like I'm not dumb either but for those of you who think that money's gonna solve your issues it doesn't solve all your issues you're gonna still have a bunch of these issues that you think you're gonna fix that's why i tell people you have to fix your whole entire thing your money your relationships your health all these things matter when it comes to living a good life living a happy life the next thing goes into buying small businesses now i'm gonna go ahead and like put this all together these three components which is get ownership don't play lego when people are playing chess and you can't Eat what you can't see. So let's talk about this now, right? We're going through a period in our life where a lot of these baby boomers are retiring. A lot of small businesses are gonna go up for sale. And I literally see every single business entrepreneur right now making a shift in their complete business. They're not buying real estate. They're not buying stocks. A lot of people right now, they're buying businesses. And that's why for myself, I hate the fact that I don't have a lot of money, but I'm also buying businesses myself. I'm buying ownership and equity in other people's companies because that's what you want. You want other businesses because that creates cash flow. You don't want real estate. That's why one of the things that I tell people, I hate real estate. I don't want real estate. The only reason I would take real estate is because of taxes. Besides that, it sucks for cash flow. You're better off investing into a business. Now, is it more risky? Yeah. Business is a lot more risky than it is for real estate. Real estate is very cooker cutter where it's super freaking easy, I would say, but I've never bought any, but it's kind of like ATMs. Really, it's the slum. I say it's the same thing as ATMs. Real estate is the same thing as ATMs. You you go ahead and find it a good location. You make sure that the thing is making money. You fix it up if you have to, and then you keep moving it around. It's the same exact same thing, I would say. Maybe it's a completely different thing, but I'm in the construction world, so I kind of see it as the same thing, so I get both sides. Either way, business is the best way to make a lot of money now. Don't think about buying real estate if you're not making $100,000, $150,000, $250,000 a year. It's not going to move the needle for you. A $200,000, $500 piece of real estate that barely makes makes you any money is not going to change your life. What will change your life is getting a business, growing that business and making an unlimited amount of income. And that's where business comes into play. So we're going into an era where almost every single baby boomer is wanting to retire. And a lot of people don't want to be business owners. In fact, they would rather be influencers. Those kids of business owners, they don't want to be 
a plumber, a roofer, or own any of these companies that their dad or mom probably had. Instead, they want to be a creator that it is what it is. But businesses are going to go for sale and you have an opportunity to buy a business. So if you're at a whole different level or say you're like, dude, I saved like $50,000 or $60,000 and you don't know what to do with it, but you hate your job on where you're working at, you should consider buying a business. Consider buying a business because there's people out there that can't get a loan for these businesses. People don't realize that these businesses, the way they're selling, you can't really get a loan. It's hard to get an SBA loan. It's hard to get like a regular loan from a bank. It's not impossible, but it's a lot harder. And the best way to put this is how I bought my business, right? The ATM business. I didn't have the $30,000 to put up for the business. In fact, I did what I tell people to do, which is seller finance. It's a more creative finance way to buy things. So if you guys haven't heard, I'll give you guys a quick little recap of how I bought my ATM business. Basically, during the pandemic, there was an owner in the ATM company in the ATM business that wanted to sell his piece of his company because he was just too much for him. I came in. I told him, hey, I don't have the money. I only have $10,000. Can you finance me the rest? He financed me the rest at 0% for a whole entire year, and I paid those machines off. That is seller financing. There's businesses out there that are willing to go ahead and seller finance you. You just have to get creative. You just have to find the deal, and really the hard hardest part of buying a business is finding a good business. There's a lot of businesses up for sale. Almost 90% of those businesses don't sell. So they are selling like hotcakes. Now, are all businesses worth it? Probably not. There's some businesses that I would stay away from. Maybe not me because I enjoy the risk. But for a lot of people that don't understand business, maybe buy a profitable business. That way, when they want your cash flowing, but I would highly, highly look into it because a lot of these private equity companies that are like buying bigger businesses, they don't want the regular small mom and pop shops. So now it's your time to buy them because here's what happens if you don't buy them. If you don't buy these businesses, they will just shut down, which sucks because imagine having an uncle fred who runs a three million dollar landscaping business and he's been running it for a really really long time and he just doesn't have anyone to buy it because nobody wants to own a landscaping business because it's not cute and it's not something that people are like fonded about or you it's not something sexy like a lot of people think it is like crypto and nfts and all these things that are going around even like my business the atm business right people think that it's kind of weird or not sexy enough like who has just machines that print out money that's it's not sexy. But who says making money is sexy, bro? Like the point is just freaking make your money. Buy these businesses. And for a lot of key things that I tell people, like say, for example, you're at a job that you just hate, that you don't want to be there anymore. Dude, there's a bunch of business owners that are selling their businesses and they make $100,000 a year in profit after everything in the business is paid for. You can buy yourself a job. You can buy yourself a job by buying a business. Maybe it's a goes against what everyone else says where like, okay, you're a business owner, but you're working 24-7. Well, I would rather work 24-7 for myself than working in a job that I hate. And that's a lot of things that a lot of people can do. You can go ahead and take a step back from your $100,000 salary job, invest $50,000 into buying another business, make the same amount of money working for yourself and be a lot happier. Or heck, maybe you make $70,000, but you're a lot happier because now you're working for yourself. And yeah, maybe it's a job that you just bought yourself, but maybe it's a way better job that you actually enjoy and you're not dreading to go to work the next day. So finding these little golden nuggets is what you get at the event guys like this is something that i already knew but i was so surprised of how many people didn't know about cody sanchez and that's why i tell people the internet and like personal branding and business is still freaking early you can go out there and still go ahead and create a personal brand talk about whatever it is that you want and she's one of the very few people who are talking about buying small businesses now there's a lot of other people i want to be one of those people i want to buy another business maybe next year but i just got another partnership but that's a whole nother story for another day either way playing chess playing checkers not chess there's a lot of people who are playing the regular game which is go to school get a job and that's it you don't have to listen to those people you can go ahead and play a completely different game and be different bro you can be different and that is okay so Cardi sanchez i will go ahead and look into her she is great we got three more speakers guys the next one's gonna be short it's gonna be pace morby pace morby dude People know this guy as the creative finance guy, the sub to guy. This guy's buying real estate all over the United States without using any of his credit, not using any of his money. And this guy is wilding out because, again, the same time that I found Cody Sanchez, the same time that I found this guy, I actually met this guy. I have a picture of this guy in my phone because I met him at one of the meetups out here in L.A. when I started going to the sub to meetups. I even went to 
the sub two meetup in Utah. He had one there. Dude, this guy has meetups all over. Like, if you have this guy, he can tear down a whole entire, like, business with all of his followers. Like, this guy has a cult going on, I would say. His sub two community, they're so loyal. They're so helpful, dude. I've gone to some of these events, and these guys are so freaking helpful. If you want to get into the real estate game, this is a whole nother way where it's not traditional real estate. It's not like wholesaling. It's not flipping or anything like It's a combination of all that, but in a creative way. It's called creative finance. And again, I kind of already talked a little bit about it when I bought my ATM company, which is like creative finance, seller finance. That's another way to do it. But you can buy real estate the same exact same way that I bought the ATM company, especially right now where mortgage rates are like at six, seven, eight percent. You can go ahead and find someone that is wanting to leave their property, keep that person's note in their name and you take over their payments. And if you want to, you can either flip the house, you can rent the house. Either way, you can get a really low interest rate in today's world. And that's probably how I'm going to buy real estate because I cannot technically buy real estate because of my tax reasons and the IRS is watching. So I'm not going to say too much, but you can buy real estate creatively where you don't need to use your credit. You don't even need income. You just need to find a person that understands creative finance because people don't understand that this world is ran by banks. But who says that banks need to run all this thing? You can be your own bank if you learn to play it correctly. And it's all legal. It's all 100% legal. In fact, here, let me give you another story. And this is probably going to be another story where I go into detail later because it's a really great story. I just got a Tesla. And technically, the way I see it, I got a Tesla for zero dollars. What do I mean by zero dollars? Well, before this Tesla, I had a Nissan Altima and I was paying about $230 a month for it. I only owed $10,000 left on the car. My interest rate on that car was about like a 2%. Insane interest rate. You can't even find this interest rate nowadays. But I met some one at one of the sub two meetups and he understood creative finance well he needed a car and i wanted to get the tesla because dude gas is expensive here in california i ran my numbers for three months and i was literally paying more than my tesla payment would have been if i kept using my nissan altima because as you guys know i go to ventura one time a week every single week so i basically sub my car to one of my best friends now and he pays my pretty much my note on my car and it's all legal it has all the paperwork going into it and yeah that's what you can do with creative finance you can creative finance anything that you want i will talk about that on another episode because it is really really such a great golden hammer that you want to have in your back pocket because you can creatively finance anything that you want people don't understand that money is just made out of thin air you can make whatever it is that you want and it's up to you on how you go ahead and put it on paper but creative finance is such a great thing that you want to know and have under your tool belt it's another tool another set of skills that you want but yeah that's pace morby i would look into the guy that guy has a lot of great content he has a great community it's a way you can get into wholesaling it's a way you can get into real estate i fully endorse the homie i would fully endorse you going to one of those meetups and just networking with people getting more friends the next speaker is brad freaking lee dude i've talked about this guy multiple times we got two speakers left best for last brad lee Dude, I took too many notes on this guy. But let's fast forward because we're already an hour into this, guys. Let me know how you guys are liking this. Next year, I'm actually going to go to a bunch of more events and talk about that at the end. But Bradley, change your perspective. Change the way you look at shit and you'll change the shit you look at. Dude, that quote, this guy's so freaking funny. This guy reminds me of myself where we just say a bunch of dumb shit. We say a bunch of dumb shit that just makes sense. But it's like, bro, we're just trying to get information to the people who need it. Change the way you look at shit and the shit you look at will change. That's crazy. I don't know what to tell people, dude. A lot of people just get stuck in their own little head where they don't realize that a lot of the insecurities, a lot of the troubles that you have, a lot of the impossibles that you have in your own brain are literally just you being you in yourself. Where, dude, you're just being negative, bro. And a lot of the things that you think about, you're the only one thinking them. You're the only one seeing the world to be crappy. Like when I wake up every single day, when I look at things, I think life is freaking amazing. I can't wait to get out of bed. I can't wait to l fucking chase my dreams. I just can't. I can't wait. That's why I work so much and people don't understand it. They think that I'm crazy. But I think it's freaking cool. A lot of you just need to change your perspective on the way you see things. Maybe that person that you see online isn't just full of bullshit. And maybe you need to invest in yourself and start hanging out with other people and start looking at things a completely different way. Because when you look at things a completely different way, life does change. It gives you a better freaking perspective. So change the way you look at shit and the shit that you look at will change. <laughs>
The next one was network raise, but raise your self-worth. Guys, going to these events, they're freaking great because you get to meet other individuals who are on the same path that you want. When I went to my first event, I never felt at home where I realized, wow, these are my people. These are my people who I get to communicate with. These are people who are reading the same books that I'm reading, are chasing the same dream, having the same exact same issues. There are a lot of people in my normal day-to-day -day life that I can't communicate my struggles with because they just don't understand. They don't understand the lifestyle that I live. They don't understand the goals that I have to them it's like why do you freaking work so much when it's like bro like I have big dreams what can I say but these people there they're like Frick, yeah like yeah like bro I'm going through the same exact same thing we should be doing all this we should be doing that I got this idea I got that idea and you can network with people so there's like this one quote that I always tell you guys the more hands you shake the more money you make well in order for you to shake those hands you also have to be valuable that's why I tell people you have to become valuable you can't be just a loser and be expecting people to be your friend because that's not gonna work dude if you don't bring me any value I kind of don't want to be your friend either so the only way I would be your friend is to pay me that's it so there's there's two ways to go ahead and network with other people. The first way is bring something to the table. Bring something to the table. Be valuable yourself. Learn to be valuable, meaning you can give somebody a piece of information that they normally wouldn't have gotten on their own or teach them something. Be of value. The other way is just pay people. That's literally it. You're going to have to pay to get into certain rooms. You're going to have to pay for relationships. You're going to have to pay to be people's friends. Like right now, I just bought a $3,000 coaching program to join a group of friends that are already making $50,000, $60,000, $100,000 a month in online because that's the space that I want to go to. And I personally don't mind reinvesting money back into myself because I always know that this money comes back to me. It's just a matter of me acting on those commitments. But you have to become valuable. Like when I go out to these networking events, when I didn't have the ATM company and people were kind of just like, oh, this guy's a loser. But now that I bring up, oh, like I have 30 ATMs, people's eyes change up. They lit up. They change the conversation. They change the way they see themselves because now they see myself as someone that's valuable. So I'm able to make friends every everywhere I go just because of the business that I have with the ATMs. And the more businesses I connect, the more value I have to other people, the more easier it's going to be to network with other people, the more easier it is to build more money, to make more money. Because now I can reach out to people in other states that are doing real estate in other more affordable places than California. And I can buy real estate in other places just because I know people from those events, because I showed them my value and me creating content, me showing myself every single day keeps them in the top of their mind. And now I can DM them and it's so much easier. And I've built relationships like literally last month or this month I was gonna make twenty thousand dollars on a real estate deal that didn't go through unfortunately but now that I know that I have this relationship it's because of me being valuable to that person me showing him something that he didn't know so that's how you build your network guys be valuable or just pay people now there's six steps that he gave us on how to change your life completely so let me give you these six steps in the quickest of quickest because we are in the podcast an hour and ten minutes let me know if you guys like an hour podcast or two hours because I don't know if I can talk for two hours dude because my mouth is drying up so first step forgive yourself dude a lot of people hold grudges because of well, the way they grew up and they they just feel bad for themselves where they can't forgive themselves so the very first thing is forgive yourself how to be a better how to completely change your life first step forgive yourself say sorry to yourself sorry for treating my body wrong sorry for being a loser sorry for not feeding you properly sorry for not reading sorry for all these things forgive yourself first the second step is to commit to do it meaning if you set a goal for yourself make sure you show up and actually do it bro don't lie to yourself because you can lie to me you can lie to every one of your friends you can lie to everyone in this world but you cannot lie to yourself so commit to yourself dude commit to yourself and commit to your goals the third step is start racking up the wins same thing as i said wake up early do what you have to do brush your teeth do your bed read do every little task that you have to do that you said you were going to do start developing a winning mindset fourth get rid of the negative people get rid of your loser friends stop hanging out with people who say but that's too hard i don't know if that's gonna work oh my god that's a lot of money why would you pay for that dude i don't want to do that i'd rather go party i'd rather go drink dude stop hanging out with those negative people i guarantee you if you start hanging out with those negative people you start hanging out with more valuable people your life will completely change like when people hang around me and they start talking about life and talking about business they realize like bro how the fuck are you so freaking positive how do you know this is gonna work i don't know bro i don't know if it's gonna work but it feels a lot better seeing it in a more positive outlook than thinking oh shit i'm gonna lose my money oh shit i'm gonna go broke oh shit that's too scary oh that's too hard dude that's fucking annoying like why would you do that so stop hanging out with negative people bro change your circle visualize your success that's the next thing is some people don't believe and i said it in the other podcast 
and that's kind of like the whole point of this whole freaking podcast is visualizing your success. Like for a really, really long time, I visualized myself getting a Tesla. Now for myself, I'm visualizing myself getting a Lamborghini. That's the next step. Visually myself living in that luxury apartment. That's the next step. Visually myself with everything that I ever wanted. I think about these things literally every single day, every single day. Sometimes the best way to visualize, and this is how I visualize, like let's say, for example, you want to live in a really, really, really nice place. I literally go on Zillow almost every day and I'm looking at apartments, looking at apartments. I'm going checking $5,000, $10,000 apartments every single day. Oh, I can afford that. Oh, that's cheap. Start thinking to myself, start putting that thing in my head where like, bro, this is cheap. I can afford this. This is nothing. And soon enough, I catch myself the other day saying $3,000, that's cheap. Like literally things like that. You have to start thinking it in your mind. Like, dude, that's cheap. That's cheap. That's cheap. Start visualizing like, bro, I can live there. I can have that car. I can have that girl. I can have that body. I can have everything. But you slowly have to believe and start seeing it every single day. So like little things like that, like going on Zillow, imagining the place that you want to live at, imagining the car that you once will have, that's the level of commitment the level of belief that you need to have to get to the next level and the last or no, the sixth step is going to be get new information there's actually seven steps get new information if you're listening to this podcast right now dude honestly i just gave you so many golden nuggets so many different roads that you can take there's not one road that gets you to a million dollars to get you to six figures you can do it so many different ways for me i got a six figures through sales i'm gonna get to the next level by building something i'll tell you guys next time but it's practically sales you have to get new information, meaning you have to reinvest back into yourself. Don't get your information from someone who's broker than you. Like sometimes people try to tell me what to do and I'm like, bro, if you make less money than me, I'm probably not going to take advice from you. At least not money advice from you. Maybe I'll take fitness advice from you. Maybe I'll take relationship advice from you, but and like every other advice, but not money advice. Like you have to make more money than me in order for me to take money advice from you. That's just the way it works at this point. So the only way I can do that is by buying other people's times. That's when I take money advice from you. But you have to be willing to get new information, dude. Learn new books. Listen to podcasts. The other day, I'm like, bro, I read two to three books a month. I s listen to about two to three podcasts a day. You know how much information I'm listening to? I rarely ever watch Netflix. I rarely do non-money making activities. I rarely hang out with losers. My whole life is just literally business money and living a better life. That's it. I'm always trying to learn new things. So you have to start literally switching your Netflix account to your YouTube account and pay for the premium subscription. Fuck ads. If you can't afford it, whatever, take your ads, but start getting new information. Start listening to podcasts, start reading books, start hanging out with better people, start leveling up your circle and get new information so you can change your life because you cannot continue doing what you've been doing the last couple of years because obviously it's not working. It's not working. So get new information. I guarantee you that's how you change your life. Seventh is value what's really important not money and this is like when it gets to like the next level that's like the next level i'm trying to get to. that's kind of like where i'm on the road like i'm right in the middle of getting there where like money's cool kind of like right in the middle and then i'm gonna get there where like money doesn't make sense i don't want to get to there and be like not happy because i know there's a lot more valuable things like right now if anything like dude one day i really do want a family that's what i've always wanted so he tells this story at the end where he's in a plane and he's coming back and then he like gets a phone call from from like his wife saying that his daughter was like in the pool and then it cuts off calls back pool crying and then it cuts off and then he lands they tell him that his daughter literally almost died and drowned and dude that shit was sad like there's no money in the world to bring somebody back there's no money in the world to bring better relationships like money is not going to make you happy there's other things that are way more valuable and that's the thing that i'm struggling with right now where i'm trying to go ahead and connect the dots with like working a lot keeping my mom happy keeping my friends close to me not losing friends making more friends spending time with them keeping in touch like it's a never-ending cycle it doesn't like i don't have it ever figured out i'm still learning from other people i get little things here and there to like make things work like say for example right now like i'm struggling trying to keep a stronger relationship with my mom and the other weekend i had a talk with her we're like hey like i know you're lonely because i'm freaking working all the time and i don't want to be that freaking asshole that works all the freaking time and doesn't have valuable relationships with other people because money's not gonna fucking solve all my problems so i told my mom i'm like hey how about we do this let's run this thing like a freaking business and let's see each other i'm gonna take you out to dinner every three weeks let's do that every three weeks every two one two weeks 
After that, give me a call. We'll talk. But we have to put it on the schedule. We have to calendar it out. And some people may think, why do you have to put your mom on a calendar? Like, bro, because I'm freaking busy and I got so much shit I got to do. But my mom knows me. If there's any emergency whatsoever, I will completely 100% answer your phone call all the freaking time for any one of my family members. You can call me at any time that you want. I will answer. That goes for a lot of my friends, too. If you're my friend. If you're not my friend, you probably don't have my number. And if you have my number and we haven't talked in over a year, we're probably not friends. So I know what's valuable to me and those relationships are what, va what value with me. And I'm trying to fix those as I grow bigger and l work more hours and make more money. Like it's never ending. And as I find out, I'll give you guys those nuggets because I don't want you guys to struggle either. I don't want you to guys make a lot of money and realize that it doesn't make you happy. Like I'm telling you right now, but that is what it is. Value what's really important. Oh, there's this big ass freaking word that he freaking said. It said Alex, the phobia, Aledexophobia, relationships, Aledexophobia. I covered relationships already. That was the last thing where like the more hands you shake, the more money you make. That's the last key component. We already went over that too many times, but Aledexophobia. I'm going to search it up for you because honestly, I forgot what the freaking definition was, but there is a freaking word, this word, Aledexophobia, where everyone has a fear of opinions, which can result in the feel of anxiety and distress. People don't freaking act on their dreams because they have this freaking word. I can't even freaking pronounce it. Aledexophobia. So stop caring about what other people think of yourself, bro, and just start freaking living your life and what you want, dude. I don't know what you freaking want. Maybe you want to make a lot of money. Maybe you don't want to be a minimalist like myself. Do whatever you want, dude. Just don't freaking care what other people think. That was Brad Lee. Dude, he has a great podcast named Dropping Bombs. I would go ahead and follow him. Great freaking guy. Last speaker. His name is Andy freaking Frisella. He owns this company called First Form. Really well known in the business world. Really well respected. Ed Milet's almost best friend, I think. Probably his best friend. Every phone freaking knows this guy. He's an inventor of 75 hard. A lot of people have been changing their life on 75 hard. Honestly, I have no freaking notes on this freaking guy because I was just too freaking active in what he was saying. But the point of the story of it all was the fact that the people at the event, those are the people that are committed to changing this world. Dude, there are evil things going on in the world and we are one of the very few people who have a fighting chance to resist whatever bad changes are going out there. We are the very few people who have to go ahead and carry a lot of other people. Like for myself, one of the reasons why I make this podcast is because I know for a fact that I'm freaking smarter than a lot of other people. I'm not trying to fucking say it in an egoistic way, but I'm just freaking like working more hours than you, bro. I read more than you. I listen to more information than you. I just do more than you. So I earned that right to say that. But there's some people out there that are helpless that can't do that because they're just not wired that way, nor do they have the mental capacity to do that. So so it is my duty as a human to do what's right and to fight for what is right. And that was his whole speech was about what is our duty as a human, as an American to fight for our freedom, to fight for people's rights and to make this fucking world freaking great again. Like business people, small business owners, we are what holds America down. And that's why I encourage always everyone to go into business, to go into business for themselves, to go ahead and figure out a side hustle, to go ahead and figure out this business game, to try to be better because there's evil all in this world. And that's all I want to say for now but you have to be willing to fight for yourself to fight for others and try to be freaking better every freaking single day because nothing is ever going to be given to you no one's gonna be coming to help you and you have to be willing to fight for what you want in life that's it bro i don't know what else to tell you guys dude there were so many other speakers on that thing on that panel but like these were like the most key components of the whole entire event dude that event was great i wasn't even gonna go but I got tickets at a really good price and my best friend wanted to go. And honestly, I love going to these events. Events like this is what literally makes me want to come back and just freaking work harder. And once I've gotten back from the event, dude, I'm so freaking fired up right now where like I fucking want to do it all and I can do it all and you can do it all. But I understand some of you guys can't afford to go to this event. Like if you really think about it, this is a thousand dollars that I spent on travel, the ticket, everything that it cost me to just be there, opportunity cost, right? Just to go to this event. Some of you guys can't afford to go to this event. Some of you guys can't afford a thousand dollars and I get it. That's fine. That's why I'd rather give you guys all this information, all this thing for free, because look, I want you to succeed. Maybe you don't have the thousand dollars, but you have this free information. I just went through 10 freaking different speakers with 10 different ways to make a lot of money with 10 different ways to go ahead and live a better life. It's literally up to you to go ahead and get all this information, look it up on your own, extract it 
and like expand everything at a better consensus and use whatever it is that you need to change your life and with your current situation because some of these things won't apply to everyone but there's certain things that can apply to certain people or maybe it's just new information that you can put in your tool belt for another day either way this is the information that i like to go out for that's why next year one of the biggest things that i have planned out for myself is to go to way more events like this next year i plan on going to like five different of events like this an atm event a merchant services event probably an online fitness trainer event maybe a roofing conference event i've looked at that a small business conference event maybe another one of these events and patrick but david's event i don't care i'm going to a bunch of these events it consists of traveling i love traveling anyways but meeting other high valuable people is what's gonna get me to the next level and i'm gonna make more content like i told you guys once i get to a thousand subscribers i'll bring people on to the podcast i know a bunch of people already that are more than willing to come but i haven't asked them i kind of told them they said they're more than happy to help me out i just not trying to do it yet because i'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers because it's my egoistic thing that i told myself as long as you get to a thousand subscribers you have the right to go ahead and get people on the show once i get people on the show hopefully this thing blows up so if you guys want to see great people on this show please hit the subscribe button hit the like button share this freaking podcast with everyone because i don't want you to guys get nailed by life i don't want you to get screwed by life and i want you to live a life where you're chasing financial abundance time freedom and joy guys let me know what you guys thought about the podcast in the comments that was great information let me know if you guys want to know more dm me for any information i'm still a small creator so i still reply back to your comments after everything else that i have going on i already have what i'm going to be talking about in the next podcast if you guys like the name of the podcast i like it now don't get nailed don't get screwed financial abundance time freedom and joy that is the mission so i'm going to be giving you guys more golden hammers as we go on if you guys have any questions let me know besides that guys i hope you guys enjoyed the show i'll see you guys next time have a great freaking life and echale ganas cabrón